Hey guys, Taki here. On this channel, we typically take a look at products that you can buy as a consumer. This is the first product that I've ever looked at on camera that you cannot buy. I shouldn't even be able to own this right now. This is the only video that I've made where I think that there's a chance the video could get taken down from the company that makes the product that I'm featuring. I am a huge fan of Lenovo and I use a lot of their products to make the videos that you guys watch and I really hope that they don't do that to this video because this is a really cool product and this is something that I was looking forward to for a long time and I really want to let other people experience it given how rare this thing is. So with that out of the way, we are going to start doing a bit of an investigation on this and I'm going to try and uncover as much of this as possible. I'm not gonna treat this as a real review, but I will give you my thoughts on whether or not I believe this thing should have been canceled and ultimately what I think the price of this should have been. So this thing came in a bigger box. I've already taken it out of the box. I've actually turned this device on and changed the system language to English, but I haven't done anything else besides that. So let's take this out of the wrapping paper. Even before we can see it, this is a very light device. When it was inside the box with all of the packing material, I didn't even think there was anything inside of it. So here we have the blue unit. I have seen pictures of this exact model before they mailed it out to me. They basically just showed me pictures of the entire thing. And then they said like, you're on your own. After you get it, it works. We're sending it to you and it works. I don't know how much of this works though, but it is in good condition from the pictures that I've already seen. So let's go over what we are seeing on this device. The first thing that we have here is a screen protector on what I'm assuming is a seven inch screen. It does have bigger borders that you'll be able to see in just a moment, but the front of this case does seem pretty nice. For our control layout, we have two joysticks that are probably Alps based. There's a few models of Alps joysticks that go around, the smallest being the Switch. This one seems to be the middle kind, and the rubber dome on this can come off. I've seen this in pictures already. So we have two joysticks and they are off axis slightly and this is very rare in this market. The joysticks themselves are nothing to write home about. There's a lot of consoles that use this exact part, but we will take a look at it if we open this up later on. We have what I'm assuming to be start and select buttons on the top side of this and they're kind of triangular shaped. And then we have a set of ABXY buttons that are a little on the small side in terms of height. And we have a D-pad on the left side. This one is also on the smaller side. These are both using conductive rubber and the rubber that they're using feels about the same between the two of them, but the D-pad is a bit stiffer. Underneath that, we have what I'm assuming is a home button and this one is probably a proprietary button that will act as a guide button in game streaming or it probably has some other functionality for the launcher that they have. Under these, we have front firing speakers and this is another thing that's pretty rare in this market. I don't know if you'll be able to notice it from what I've been doing so far, but this thing shows fingerprints very briefly before they go away. So I wonder if this front surface here is some kind of uh, metal material. So the first thing that I wanna do is take a look at the size of these buttons. So these are just under eight millimeters and that's actually a pretty standard size for devices of this size, but the height of these buttons is a bit different. These buttons are around 1.3 millimeters high and that is a bit on the low side for a device like this. Even smaller devices have taller buttons than this. And I'm noticing when I press down the button that it is possible to go under the shell because these are using conductive rubber and that's kind of strange. The D-pad height is about the same and this can also go slightly under the shell. Well, it doesn't go under the shell, but it can go flush with the shell. This isn't as big of a deal as the ABXY buttons are. On the top of this device, we have a set of stacked shoulder buttons and they have what I'm assuming are hall-based analog buttons, but we'll have to open this up to check. These are very nice. They have a good amount of pushback force to them and there is no grinding mechanism, which is why I'm assuming that they are using a magnet for input. The L1 and R1 buttons are using micro switches and I can get input across the entire range of these very easily. For the top, we don't have a lot going on here. We have a power button, a volume rocker, a microphone, and an SD card tray. I didn't think that they would add SIM card functionality to this device, but the Legion line does have devices that do operate as phones. So maybe this card signifies that at one time they were considering adding LTE to this, but it doesn't have it. We can only use this for an SD card reader at this point. That leaves us with the bottom of the device and we have a second microphone down here. So I'm assuming that these both work in tandem for noise cancellation. We also have a type C port in the middle. I don't know if this can support video out, but we will check on that. And we have a headphone jack to the right of that. 
Now, if anybody is wondering, this device does have Lenovo Legion branding in several places, and this is the first one that I'm seeing here down on the corner. Now we're gonna move over to the back and there's a lot of interesting things going on here. The first is this rather big sticker here that has a few words that are in Chinese. I'm going to put a translation of this sticker on the right side of your screen so that way you know what you're looking at, but most of the important things are already in English. The first thing that's cool to see is this device had a model name of Zelda, and you can see Zelda in a few places, namely here and here, but also inside the device itself. Besides this, the next thing that I wanna look at is this model number over here. It says Q7203, and this is strange because this model number is different in a few other places. So right there, it's Q7203, and it's also referenced by a different number down here and in the system itself. The next thing that I wanna point out here is this DVT 2.1. DVT stands for Design Verification Testing or Design Validation Testing, and that is one of the final stages that a product goes through before it ends up in a retail product. This being 2.1 means that this is probably very late in the product development, and just from what I've experienced so far getting to the back of this device, like this thing feels very close to being a retail product. There's one final thing that's interesting on here, and that is this date on the bottom here. A lot of people have been assuming that the Steam Deck is the reason why this device doesn't exist, but this date predates the Steam Deck by a long time, and it was at this stage at that time. So that is pretty crazy that we didn't see this device. Like this thing even predates Odin by a long time. I mentioned that there's Legion branding on this device and the biggest place that you'll see it is right here on the back in big letters. This is molded into the device. This doesn't seem like it's screen printed on there. Now we're gonna have to turn this device on to do more meaningful testing, but there is one final thing that we can talk about before we even turn this on and that's the ergonomics of this device. At least based on my limited testing at this point, I would say that ergonomics are not a strong point on this and that's largely because the back part here isn't the best design that they could have gone with. I don't know if it's gonna come across that easily on camera, but this ridge here gets to a sharp point on this back shell, and when you have your fingers here, you can feel this scraping against them. I don't know if that is reflective of what this would have been like in its retail stage, but it doesn't feel the best, and I think they probably could have done a bit better on this with a more ergonomic and rounded shape here. The side rail here also has a pretty sharp edge that they could have rounded a bit to make this feel better in the hand. This and the back part are the only things that I don't like on this in terms of ergonomics. It seems very strange to talk about this given that this is not something that you can buy, but the build quality on this is actually pretty good. The materials that they're using here feel premium and it definitely seems like this is a Lenovo product, but the only thing that I'm seeing that I don't really like that much is the the finish on the back doesn't reject fingerprints very well and you might be able to see that there is a whole lot going on here and there was a whole lot going on here before I even opened this up. So I'm not sure if they could have eventually solved this problem with a different surface coating, but it does show up a lot on this blue version and I think the black one would be even worse than this. That's enough about the hardware of this device. Let's turn this on so we can take a look at the software. There we go, we have the Legion logo here powered by Android. I really like that the logo matches the color of the shell. I'm not sure if there's a different color for the black one or not. All right, here we are. Let's press A to enter. Now this might seem familiar to some of you. So far, this Android search bar here is giving me uh, stock Android vibes. This is usually what you see on stock Android. You'll see these icons, these stock Android icons, and you usually see this old Google bar but there is a whole lot of customization that they've done to this device, even in this stage. Let's start with the settings to see what we're working with. All right, so this is pretty interesting. A lot of you guys are probably already getting where this is inspired from, but this is essentially an Android version of the Switch OS, and I'm gonna get my Switch really quick just so we can compare. So as you can see on the Switch, we have all of our stuff here on the left side, and we have the main contents here on the right with these icons on the bottom. And that is basically what we have here too. Whatever, can't hate, it's working so far. So we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, VPN settings, airplane mode, we have an apps manager. I'm assuming that there's a lot of stuff that's already on here. I haven't installed anything, so if we go to the See All apps, these are all the things that were already on there. Under Display, we can see that they do have a game launcher on this. We'll probably take a look at it in just a moment. Right now it's set to the Google launcher. There's an HDR mode on this, which is kind of strange. If we turn this on, we can see Game HDR Enhancement. If we click on that, 
we can see how this is going to handle different situations with contrast. I'm going to leave this off for now, but we might take a look at it later on when we get games running on this. Under brightness, this thing is at 95% right now, which is a equivalent to so right now that's at 100 the switch is at 100 the color temperature is different on these but this device is a bit brighter than the oled switch now i'm really interested to see if this is the same seven inch screen that's used in the logitech g cloud and there is a really easy way for me to find that out by benchmarking this screen and i am going to do that later in this video Underneath display, we also have a theme setting. And just like the switch, it looks like we have a light and a dark mode. And if you guys know me, it's dark mode all the way. Damn, that is a nice looking display. I'm looking at this on a monitor right now and the black part of this looks exactly the same as the border. But if I look at it head on, I can see a, a little difference. So I think this contrast ratio is probably around 1,300 to one or somewhere in that range. It's not the best that I've seen, but it's pretty damn good. So we're just gonna continue on. Underneath theme, we have battery, which is normal. We have sleep. I've changed this to 30 minutes of inactivity. We have notification settings, language. When I originally got this, this thing was set to Chinese. I added English and moved it to the top. So some of the things in here are going to be in English, but there is still a lot that is in Chinese. And we have privacy settings, location settings. Let's just turn that off so Lenovo can't find me. <laughs> just kidding. And then we have gamepad. Under gamepad, we can swap the AB buttons and we have joystick calibration. This seems like super close to the one on Odin. Wow, what the hell? This is like, this is like exactly like the one on Odin, except this part isn't automatic. That was it, all right. Under system navigation, we can choose gestures or three buttons. This thing was set for gesture mode out of the box, which is like what it should be. We can't hide that hint on the bottom, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's better than the three button system. Uh, continuing on, we have accessibility. We have device info. Right now you can see the Lenovo model number, even though it's different than the one that was on that tag that said Zelda. If you punch this model number into Google, you will find some websites talking about firmware for this. And they reference this as a tablet, which is kind of strange. I'm not sure how they got a hold of this or if this is a reused model number. I couldn't find anything useful online when I was searching for it. Under legal info, we have a user agreement but I didn't agree to this, so we're gonna back out of that. I actually don't even wanna look at any of the other licenses because <laughs> I don't want them to apply to me. Uh, let's go on here. I did come down here and enable developer options because I'm going to silo a bunch of stuff here. For storage, we have 30% use so far with 20 gigs free, and you can see that the system is using 19 gigs by default. All right, that's enough for this. Let's go back to the main screen now. So for apps, we have App Store, Calendar, Clock, Feedback, File Manager, Gallery, Gamepad Launcher, HD Browser, not that standard definition browser, Log Tool, Search, Settings, a Chinese input method, and a bunch of applications for this device. Let's start with the first one, the App Store. This thing needs internet access, which is probably going to allow this device to phone home. I'm just hoping that there's not going to be anybody on the other end of that phone call to answer it and find out that this device is in my possession. All right, so I've gone ahead and connected to the Wi-Fi and dumped the footage from the first part of this video. Now let's start looking at the applications. Our first app is called the App Store. We're going to open that up. Uh, inside here, we have a message that doesn't translate into English even though the system is in English. It says that there is no data found and then you can press to retry, but it will tell you that it fails. In here, there's not too much that we can do. We can go into this menu, but this seems kind of broken. All of these options basically just bring you back to the same thing no matter what you do, but this application does have a search feature. If we come in here and search for something like Google, for example, you can see that we can download Google Chrome, but it tells us that we shouldn't do it. It doesn't advise you to do it. Let's back out into the apps again. We're gonna skip over these and go to feedback. This seems to be a custom application that they wrote just for doing feedback on these DVT models. And the strange thing here is it asks for your Facebook email or your Facebook account, but that's not something that you can access here without a VPN. We're gonna jump over the gamepad launcher because I'm assuming that's going to be more in depth and we're going to go to the HD browser. Inside the text that you have to agree to be able to use this, it says that the data is gonna be stored in the Lenovo servers in China, so I think this is an application that they made themselves. Back onto the main menu again, we have log tool. If we open up this, 
we can create a log or we can delete the unused logs and we can make logs for a bunch of different things on here. These are for debugging purposes, so these aren't very useful for us. We're gonna skip over search settings and this input method. We're gonna go to this one that says start. It's gonna ask us to download a different version of this, but we're just gonna go ahead and skip this. Now this seems to be a streaming service just for China. I logged into this by scanning a QR code when I was entering my Wi-Fi password and it seems like I can play any of these games for free. I don't know how long I can play them for free, but I test out Final Fantasy 15 off camera just to make sure that this worked, and it does work. And as you can see, we have Final Fantasy 15 here loaded up on the streaming service. I'm not sure how long I can play this for free, but it does work. I'm a bit far away from the Wi-Fi signal right now, so the quality isn't gonna be the best, but the service does work, at least here in China. Let's jump over to the system update. I don't think there's an update available. Yeah, there's there's no update available right now. We're on version 14, which is pretty high for a device that never saw a retail release. It's back out again. This doesn't seem like an important application. It's just something from Tencent. So we're gonna go up now to the gamepad launcher. All right, so this seems to be another thing that is not in English, even though the system language is in English. I'm gonna do some rough translations on some of the things that are here, just so you can understand what's happening. The headline says welcome, and then this bottom text over here says thank you for buying this device. On the bottom, it asks us to look at the manual, and the second one says skip. I'm gonna just show off the manual real quick. All right, so this is just talking about, this is a game streaming device, and if you have good internet, then you're gonna have a good service. So we're gonna continue. And this next one says that you can also do local streaming if you want. And then this tells us to hold down this button in the corner to get to the main launcher. But it also does a screenshot for some reason. Oh, okay, this is very strange. <laughs> Let me put this down. This looks strangely familiar. Do you know where this is from? I think you guys know where this is from. This is the same launcher from the Logitech G Cloud. It's exactly the same. They just themed it. I'll take out my G Cloud in just a second. Let's go over some of the things here just to see if some stuff is different. So in the on the top, it says account. If we go over there, there's something called T-Space account. But if I press the A button on it, nothing happens. If I press A on Lenovo account, it does let me log in, but not gonna do that. Definitely not gonna give him my phone number. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, we have notifications here. Looks exactly like the Logitech G Cloud. We have gallery, and you can see how many times I've pressed this button in the corner. You have all the different screenshots. We have settings, but that sends us back to this which is a bit different than the Logitech G Cloud. Okay, and then the last one we have is to put the device to sleep. Okay, I'm gonna get my Logitech G Cloud out now and turn it on so we can see these things side by side. <laughs> the mystery, <laughs> this onion has way too many layers. Well, I think it's safe to say we know what happened to this device. It became the Logitech G Cloud. This launcher is almost exactly the same. Even the font seems to be the same. Like this is title case and this is not, but the A here and the A down there look to be the same or very similar. Let's take a look at the top menu just to check one by one. All right, so that layout is pretty much the same. Notification seems to be the same, except this one doesn't populate and this one does. All right, gallery is a bit different because this is using Google Photos and this doesn't have it. There's a context menu if you press the menu button. So let's press that on both of them and see if it works. Okay, we have start app, start app. We have check update. We have check for updates, okay. Big improvement there on Logitech's side. We have add to quick. We have add to quick start, okay, a lot of work in there. We have uninstall, we have uninstall app. Okay, Logitech's putting in a lot of work just <laughs> editing the text fields of this. This is so strange. I can't believe that this launcher is the same. The only thing that seems to be different is this one has this weird sound effect and this one doesn't. I think the theme looks way better on this one than it does here. And, and the theme options on this are also not that great. Wow, this is really strange. The user agreement for this launcher says that it was made by Tencent. This one doesn't say that, but they must be made by the same engineers. I really have so many questions and so few <laughs> answers. I wonder if Tencent started with Lenovo and then Lenovo canceled. So then they switched over to Logitech or basically just shifted the team over to this and then changed the ID around. It seems way too strange that these things are this similar, at least on this front. The rest of the system on this one seems better than this. It's also really strange that there are a lot of things that are better on this device than the Logitech G Cloud, but then there are some things that are better on the G Cloud that are worse on this. I have been at this for like the better part of three hours already, and I have way more questions than answers. There's actually one more uh, point 
about this whole Logitech Lenovo relationship that I'm going to say for the end of the video because it is another layer to this onion that we're peeling back and I also don't know the answer to that further complication. To be able to go any further with this video, I need to install a bunch of stuff that I would usually use for a review. So I'm going to do that off camera and get a bunch of stuff set up here with games so we can test this out. And I'm going to come back when that is all done. So far, I am very intrigued. All right, so this is the next day. I've already gone ahead and installed all of the stuff that I need for the rest of this video. We're going to start off by doing some emulation tests on this before working our way over to other benchmarks. This isn't going to be a full emulation showcase. We're just basically going to bounce around from different systems just to get a general idea of what this thing can do before we look at some synthetic benchmarks. All right, now we're at the point where we can take a look at some benchmarks. And the first one that we're gonna do is a benchmark of this screen. I'm going to start off with a benchmark of this screen, and then we're gonna transition to a benchmark of the Logitech screen from my Logitech G Cloud review. Our next benchmark is Geekbench, and we got a single core score of 1550 and a multi-core score of 1589. When it comes to Vulkan, we got a score of 1096, and for OpenCL, we got a score of 1186. The last thing that we're going to do is head over to ADA64, and in here we can find a bunch of useful information. We can see that the device identifies as Zelda, and it identifies as Zelda if you open up an ADB client and use ADB shell. If we head over to the CPU section, we can see that this is a Snapdragon 720G, which is the same processor that is in the Logitech G Cloud. That leaves this whole thing at a pretty strange point. I mentioned earlier that the launcher on this looks identical to the launcher that is on the G Cloud, and I mentioned that the launcher on the G Cloud was made by Tencent. While I was installing the emulators for the emulation section, I found that the launcher is in fact made by Tencent. So that's a very strange situation. Now, the weirdest thing about this is while I was doing the last section that you just watched, I decided to try and plug in a Type-C cable into this to see if it could do video out. The Logitech G Cloud cannot do video out, but this device can. And I'm gonna throw up some B-roll so you can see it for yourself. It is so strange to me that these devices could be this similar, but this one could have better features than the Logitech G Cloud. 
Now to add another layer to this onion that we've been trying to uncover this entire video, there is a third company in this space that's releasing another handheld that's like this with a different processor, but they started off their campaigns of promoting that device by using this device. When they did their first video on Chinese social media, they had this device with tape over the entire surface, but you could still see some details like the triangle buttons and the speaker grill. That company is now making a different device that doesn't look anything like the device that they were filming in that original video, and they are also using a different processor in this. What I don't know is how they got their hands on this device at that stage, because at that point, this wasn't being sold widely like it is now. Now, a lot of people have been asking me how I got my hands on this device. I bought this on a secondhand market in a listing of a bunch of these things, and they were selling for $160. The seller said that there was 1,000 of these models in all different levels of quality. There were only 100 that were in the condition like the one that I have here, and there were very few that were blue, which is why I bought the one that I have. I don't know how those guys got their hands on this, because typically these devices would never see the light of day if a project got canceled, but they do have them. If they were able to sell their entire stock for the price that I bought mine, they would be looking at a revenue of around 1 million RMB, which is a pretty nice chunk of change to get for something that was probably supposed to be destroyed. Now in this video, we didn't open this up because I don't want to ruin this device given the fact that there are so few of them in this blue color, and I want to keep it in the stage that it's in right now. I did ask the seller for a picture of another prototype that they had inside their collection with the back shell off, and I saw something in that picture that reminded me of another device that I own. The inside of this device looks very similar to another device that I own, and I am planning on buying a second one of these just so we can do a deep teardown on this and compare it to that other device. I have some thoughts about why this project was canceled, but they're not things that I really want to go into inside this video. I did reach out to Lenovo to request a comment on this handheld, and I did get a response that I'm going to read now. While we can't comment on speculation around potential innovations, we are always experimenting with and pushing the boundaries of our tech, and gaming is one of the main focus areas we continue to explore as part of our wider innovation. After spending the amount of time that I did with this device to make this video, I have probably a controversial opinion. I don't believe this device should have been canceled. There were only a few things that needed to be changed around on this device to make it ready for a retail release, in my opinion. The D-pad rubber could have been improved a bit, and these buttons could have been a bit taller than they are. With that change, and maybe a change to the back, this would have been an awesome product. And it would have been a product that's a lot more useful than the Logitech G Cloud, given the fact that this has video out support. Some people might ask if I think this device was worth the price that I paid, and for $160 for what I got here, I definitely think this thing was worth the money that I paid. These kinds of prototypes never sell on the market, and when they do, the prices are a lot higher than this one was. I am a big handheld collector, as you all know, and this is one of my prized possessions in my collection, given the fact that this is extremely rare. I hope you enjoyed going on this journey with me, and if you have any other questions, you can leave those down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you here next time with another one. Happy gaming, everyone.